Do 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 do. We're back already. We got Joe Rogan on the phone. What's up, Joe? Hello, boy. Hello. Joe. What's happening? What the fuck? Well, we're getting what ready to go fuck? to uh, Montreal, Canada. We're broadcasting live uh, tomorrow and Friday. The first time um, that we're broadcasting out side of america oh. oh that's beautiful the the the, the uh just for laughs thing yeah, yeah. We, we finally after all these years decided to do it <laughs> fun time to, you know the, it's a fun hang yeah uh -huh. the best thing about it is how many comics are up there it's a good time yeah definitely looking forward to it absolutely and we just know. learned about um beaver tail and you can make bacon out of beaver tail. Some guy was trying to turn us on to that. Sounds oh, they're disgusting. crazy. That, that's not going to taste good. And the no. guy said you got to slice it thick. <laughs> yeah. And we've just been talking about it during the break, how just disgusting that sounds. Sounds putrid. And, but well, he's trying to say, no, man, just, it just tastes just like bacon. But I don't think we're going to... I don't think it <clears throat> I don't think we're going to gross Joe out with anything. Well, with well that's why yeah. I'm bringing it up. That's there's a there's a connection <clears throat> here to you know <clears throat> fucking weird shit that people seen some bad stuff. I understand. Yeah, I know a guy who ate beaver tail. Steve Ranella. He uh, he uh, used to have this show on uh, the Travel Channel called The Wild Within, oh. and it was uh, it was all about like he would do the same thing that Lewis and Clark did when they like travel across the country and like shoot animals and make boats out of moose hides and shit. And, yeah. And he ate a beaver tail and it did not look good. Oh God, no. But no just it looked like a, a last ditch effort to stay alive sort of a thing. Yeah, yeah. It just seems <laughs> yeah. like it'll be grisly and fucking, yeah. Uh, it's all fat. It's yeah. A, like yeah. A like bacon, the beautiful thing about bacon is it's fat, but there's also some meat and that meat happens to be pork. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like it's not a fucking rat. It's a giant fatty rat with a big stupid fish tail. A big yeah. flat tail. Yeah, it's a disgusting animal. Yeah, what really do you think are. of that report about fish oil causing prostate cancer? That's a very interesting report. The, the problem is it's only one report. It's, these days, it's really difficult to find out who's right and who's retarded. Right. You know, because there's so many goddamn reports these days, yeah. and they're so conflicting. Like, stuff that's supposed to be really, really good for you turns out to be killing people. So it's like... I don't know. Who the fuck is right? I, I use fish oil on a daily basis. You do, right? All the time. It's so important for inflammation. For inflammation for, like, for jujitsu and, and, like, uh, things that cause a lot of inflammation from exercise, like knees and your, your, your elbows and your back. Mm. Fish oil is a miracle cure. I try to read for my inflammation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, God. Joe, I think you found the perfect fucking show, by the yes. way. I'm very happy for you. And uh, Oh, the, thank you. Thank you very much. And we're getting good reviews here in New York for the show, so I'm, I'm, oh, really? I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's called uh, Joe Rogan Questions Everything, premiering on Sci-Fi tonight at 10. Yeah, I hope it turns out good. I mean, I spent a lot of time working on it. It's really kind of stupid to have another gig. I have too much going on <laughs> at, at this point in time. It's really, I, I don't even know how the hell I did it. Now, what's the uh, what's the whole gist of the show? The gist of the show is, uh, well, it's, it's it's sort of an extension of what I already do on the podcast. Mm -hmm. the, and the podcast is actually in every episode. The the idea is I go out and like like the first episode is about Bigfoot. I've been uh, an idiot obsessed with Bigfoot since I was a little kid. <laughs> so I actually go out, me and my pal Duncan Trussell, actually go out to the woods in the Pacific Northwest. We go looking for Bigfoot. We stayed out there. We went with professional Bigfoot hunters. We met with them. We looked at the evidence they gathered. We took their <laughs> evidence and brought it to geneticists. And I mean, we really tried to treat it as if yeah, you went deep on this one. Uh, yeah. We went super deep. We went full retard. It was yeah. really fun. <laughs> but uh, the experts, were they a little uh, little strange? Uh, some yes and some no. Really? Uh, it's like what you find when you're looking for Bigfoot, here's what you don't find. Black dudes. <laughs> okay? It's all the same thing. It's all these unfuckable white guys in the, 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 the latter half of their life. Yeah. That's, that's what you're finding. You're finding dudes who are crossed over past the great divide of 40X whatever, and uh, they're not getting any pussy whatsoever. So they're like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> that's what I've always wanted to do. What? 
And so they go wandering through the woods, looking, you know, knocking on trees. They have all these things that they do, like they believe. They, they have, there's, first of all, almost no evidence of Bigfoot. I know, almost that's nothing. just it, yeah. And nope. you, you find that out along the way. The, the best evidence is, is footprints. That's the best evidence. Yeah, plenty of footprints around, but no, not, no bones, mm-hmm. no piece of hide somewhere oh. or tools or any of this shit. Or uh, a hat or a text message that one of them <laughs> sent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting subject. Mm-hmm. What's really interesting is that there used to be a real live Bigfoot. Yeah. The animal itself absolutely used to exist as recently as 100,000 years ago. It was called Gigantopithecus, oh. and they found out about it in the 1920s at an apothecary shop in China. There's a guy who was an anthropologist who was searching through a pile of bones, and he found this gigantic primate tooth that he knew wasn't a gorilla, he knew wasn't a human being, and he was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> And he asked the people, and they said they knew where they found it. So they went to this particular area. They found more bones, including a jawbone. And they found through the design of the jawbone that this is an animal that was a bipedal animal. So it stood on two legs. And it was between 8 and 10 feet tall. It was a gigantic, huge, gorilla-looking thing. And so, you know, it, it led them to this discovery of this animal that absolutely existed. And as I said, the, like, the most recent bone was 100,000 years ago. So the, 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 mm. the theory for the Bigfoot is that this animal came along the Bering Strait the same way people did right. into North America. And just the Pacific Northwest is so lush with life and plant life that they decided to stay up there. It is mm. fucking freaky up there, I'll tell you that. When you go up in the Pacific Northwest, the amount of just completely undiscovered territory. Yeah. It's it, massive. You walk around and just think, like, I am the first person to step here, if, <laughs> if not ever, in a very long time. Yeah, when you fly over it, all the way from Alaska, all the way down to Northern California, that's where all the sightings are. Yeah. It's really strange. You know, and like I said... It could most likely be 100% bullshit, but it's also a, a real animal. I mean, it, it was real. You know, mm-hmm. It's like someone saying that uh, we've been seeing a brontosaurus in the Congo for the past you know, 100 years. <laughs> and you got to go, well, there used to be a brontosaurus. It's not likely. This is way, way, way more likely than that because this animal lived 100,000 years ago for a fact, 100%. Yeah. How far in the woods uh, did you go? Oh, we went deep. We were we were no. fucking. It was freaky, man. Well, well, that's what I was going to ask you. How how freaky? Mount Rainier. Wait, wait. We took. We went to Mount Rainier. What's really freaky is yeah. how many people who live up there in the woods have seen these fucking things. Like not just like one, but like half the people. And some of them will tell you stories like normal people who didn't want to be on camera, normal people who had regular jobs, weren't crazy, and they're like, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I saw it. I saw it. It was chasing after an elk. It was gigantic. I was about six miles in. We were camping, and we saw this fucking thing. I saw it for two seconds. It was the craziest two seconds of my life. It, it was 100 yards away. It stepped between these two trees. I saw a giant gorilla, and I shit my pants, and I've never been the same. <laughs> Wow. wow. It's and, really weird, man. And they don't want to go on camera. They, some of them don't want to go on camera. Interesting. Some of them do, and the people were crying. We had a guy, this fucking guy was telling us a story. He starts crying. Oh, pissy eyes. Yeah, how? Shit is pissed. Yeah, get a hold of yourself. Crying. Jesus Christ. Get, get, get a hold of yourself. Just a missing link, sir. Relax. Yeah, relax. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you caught your wife fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, by the way, Jim, it's funny that you said that, oh. because that's uh, one of the primary theories when it comes to the genetics of this animal. Animal, is that they think that it's a hybrid. They think it's, it's some, mm-hmm. at some point in time, like one of the ancient relatives of man had sex with whatever the fuck this thing is. Jesus. And that's, that's why it's so smart. But how does it, but even how would it reproduce? One guy could just do that and create a new species? One girl, well, it has been done. Um, it, 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 some hybrids are fertile. It depends on how close the genome is, apparently. Yeah, yeah, you need like the... The equal number of chromosomes or some shit yeah, some in the shit, reproductive like, cells. Some, some animals, some, yeah. some hybrids actually, I mean, that is actually how some hybrids become a new species. I don't know. Look, I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's real, but I'm not convinced it's not real either. Well, we got a guy from Seattle agrees that Bigfoot is out there. 
that's the area. See, Seattle, right. Washington State has the highest amount of sightings, and that area around Mount Rainier has the highest amount of sightings in Washington State. In fact, the names of all these hills and valleys, all of them like there's a giant amount of them that are all named after an ancient Indian word for Bigfoot. Oh my God! Yeah, is there a mashup Nicole Mountain? <laughs> she's got huge feet. <laughs> let me let me put Matt on with uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, Matt in Seattle, go ahead. Hi, Joe. Uh, yeah, I live like 25 miles out of Seattle, and I hike all the time. And yeah, there's some shit out there, dude. Like I'm totally with you. I think <laughs> dude. But but Matt, have you seen anything? You can't just. Oh, I've seen like foot. I, I've seen markings on trees that are not like hu- human or animalistic. Like they're they're some next level shit. Well, one of the weird things they find in trees. <laughs> All right, Matt. Uh, thank, thank you. you. For the worst <laughs> contribution <laughs> possible. Right, thank you. <laughs> so, by the way, that's the kind of guy that's out there looking for Bigfoot. Sure. <laughs> they weren't human or animal. That doesn't I help us. Shit, man. It's impossible to do, man. Right. One of the things you find is tree branches that are like trees that are snapped off like 8 to 10 feet up. Instead of like at the bottom, like if you were pulling on a tree where it would snap, you see a tree like snapped in half. And you're like, well, how the fuck did that happen? And no one knows. It's a live tree. It's on a dry tree. And these things get snapped. Like, and also you see trees that are like stacked in these weird ways. And we found some of that deep in the woods. It's it's very fucking bizarre. It, mm. It's it's very bizarre when you realize that you're talking about thousands of square miles of just like you know how you open up a box of Q-tips and you see how many Q-tips are in there. That's what the fucking trees are like up there because it's raining constantly. <laughs> It fucking never stops raining. So at, and when you're walking through the woods, you don't make any noises because below you are five to six feet of pine needles and leaves just oh, massed down Christ. and compressed. So everything is like this big, smushy cushion everywhere you go. It's really fucking freaky up there, man. Is it five feet of pines? Wow, Jesus. Pine needles. Needles and 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 uh, and leaves and shit that falls from the trees because there's so much vegetation. It's really like one of the weirdest places I've ever been. Did it's you, like a completely different dimension. Did you go into the whole uh, rainforest? Oh yeah, we went deep yeah. in. Yeah, I, I hiked uh, the whole rainforest, but I mean it was more like a day hike. But still, the amount of different shades of green you see as you're walking through this uh, through the rainforest Greenish. is amazing. Yeah, and then you see beautiful. then you see huge trees that are Easily 200 years old, growing out of a tree that fell down. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. saw that shit, right? And you realize, holy fuck, we're so insignificant. <laughs> yeah. Our time on this earth is nothing. Yeah, when you go 200 years ago, and you you know you think about how ridiculous that is, you're talking about 200 years ago is like nothing. That's right. a blink of an eye, and there wasn't even anybody here. Like People right. were just getting here, and the fucking stupid wagons with wooden wheels. They're like, we made it! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. trees are so wide, I can't even... I can't even... You have to see it for yourself, and then, you know, that yeah. tree fell, then a little seedling gets in it, and then a huge mass of tree grows, grows out, out of, of it. Well, have you ever uh. seen the raid... The redwood trees, where they cut holes in them, and you oh, drive yeah. cars through them. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I, I, drive cars through the bottom of a tree. Yeah. Did you camp out the there? Or did, you, or, did you, or did you just go in and out in the same day? Well, we Duncan and I stayed at a hotel. We were smart. We went the Bear Grill style. Yeah. We figured, look, we're going to be there till late at night, and then we'll sleep for a few hours in a hotel, and then get back there in the morning. Like, why the fuck do we have to sleep on the ground? Out there like an asshole in a in a big cloth house. <laughs> I mean, it's just, there's a lot of real shit to worry about out there, like mountain lions. Like they're, they're, they're legit. I mean, there's plenty of food for them. Like they probably wouldn't attack a person because there's so much elk up there to eat. Like right. everywhere you go, you're stepping in elk shit. It's oh really? Everywhere. You see, we saw elk everywhere. I saw they're elk. They're big massive. Big wild cows. Yeah, they're fucking massive. Huge. How, they're, they're huge, everywhere. right? Yeah. They everywhere and they make weird noises. Yep. They make a whistle. It's like, huh. it's very strange. Did you pet any? <laughs> <laughs> With my cock, Jim. <laughs> I would love to pet an elk. 
Now we got I don't the think they would let you. They would stomp you to death. Oh, would they really? They're, they're very them. angry. They're, yeah, they they have don't want to, they're massively charged with testosterone. Yeah, they're nasty. Uh, Jeff, New Hampshire. Why do you never find Bigfoot skeletons? We kind of went over that. We okay, don't... well, why do you ever never find bear skeletons? There's a lot of bear, in fact, thousands. But finding a dead bear is extremely rare. Hmm. Finding a mountain lion, a dead mountain lion, even more rare. Real animals that we absolutely know about, you very rarely find dead. The only thing you find dead on a regular basis is, like, deer that have been hit by cars and things along those lines. You find those, but you very, very rarely find known animals dead in the woods because it takes only a short amount of time for things to go after them and devour them. Like, if you leave a dead animal on the ground in the woods where all these rodents and coyotes and all these different animals live they eat that fucking thing down to nothing in no time even the bones yeah the the nature has a really efficient way of getting rid of things but the thing about sasquatch if it was a real animal the the the, the suspicion is that they bury their dead wow Oh, so they have know. little, you know, little burial forms that no one ever sees. Them. But when you figure a couple of hundred years, if you look at it like that, like we've been on the West for three hundred years, that's not. It's not like we've been there for five thousand years. That's not that long a period of time where you wouldn't find something. No. Like, something could exist that we don't find in, in three hundred years. That's not that crazy. Well, especially when you go there and you realize what you're dealing with. I, I, I had never been, so I didn't really know what it was like up there. But when you go up there and you're walking through those woods, you're like, oh, no, it could fucking be anything up here. There could be almost anything up there. You see eagles. You see all kinds of freaky shit up there. Wow. And this is the first episode. Yeah, of... that's the first. It's, yeah, one of my favorite subjects ever. That's the first one. And then we we went. We, we There was a bunch of different episodes. We went to New York and went to this transhumanist episode episode where it's all these people that want to live forever and download their consciousness into computers and they have robot parts and very fucking freaky shit that was, that, that was interesting too that's uh, ray kurtzwell right yeah 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 we talked to him we had him on he's he's, he's a bit of a bore but he's <laughs> but, he, but he's yeah. highly intelligent i'll tell you tell yeah you he's much. not the most excitable guy in the world but his concepts are pretty interesting well, he's predicted, he's more accurate as far as his predictions for future technology than anyone throughout in human history. Did you see and, his, Oh, sorry. Sorry, Joe. Go. No, I was just going to say, and he has a bunch of inventions that he's invented himself. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's the guy responsible for speech to text. When you're talking to your phone and Siri answers questions for you, that's because of Kurzweil. Mm. Did he's you a, see the documentary on him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And did you see the part about the robots where the people working with the robots are scared shitless of the actual uh, technology behind it? And <laughs> yeah. they're basically saying, we've got to shut down the program. Oh, man. <laughs> they talked to these guys. I think it was Japan. Japan, it's been a few years now, but they yes. were losing their minds going, you don't understand, we we, we are, are heading into a dangerous fucking place with this technology. Yeah, that's the guy who calls them artilects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Artificial intellects. Yeah, it's... It's interesting, you know, the the idea that they would have the same sort of instincts as us, though, is kind of silly because the only reason we have these instincts is because we were raised biologically. It's uh -huh. Natural selection forced us to, you know, the survival of the fittest. There won't be any of those instincts. All the things that make human beings so fucked up are that we come from chimpanzee DNA. We we come from this lineage of animals that were hiding in trees from jaguars and fighting for the best mate. I mean, that all that shit is the reason why jealousy exists. And, and all these different emotions exist. It's all like they're all methods for continuing the, the genome. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that won't exist in a, in a robot. That's, but, why, that's why there's debate. It's like it's a completely uncharted area. Let me ask you, if, if that stuff's all true, like whatever it is that makes us us, like, like all those things you just said, it went, isn't there a way to break it down eventually once we have DNA mapped into just pure chemicals, like this chemical causes that and that chemical causes this? So if it's broken down into a, a chemical thing, a formula can be figured out for it. Which would make these like weird things that feel intangible in us not feel so so random or weird at all. Which, sure. Which, yeah. which is where a robot might be able to. Uh, that's why I kind of believe Kurzweil when he talks about uploading us to hard drives, because once we're broken down into the most basic, figureoutable uh, formula, that might be possible. 
It, it might be, or you know what else might be possible? What might be possible is that we're not even really here. And that's where it gets really strange, when you start getting into the where concept of virtual reality. When you get into the concept <clears throat> of the, the, the absolute undeniable fact that there's going to come a point in time where you're able to create an artificial reality that is indiscernible from this reality. You can bang on it, you can pick things up, you can fuck, you can get shot in it, you can die in a car crash. All the different things that can happen to you in this life can happen to you in a simulated environment that's uh, without a doubt, it's inevitable. It's coming. Whether it's 10 years from now or 100 years from now, they're going to be able to plug you into a virtual reality that you're not going to be able to tell. And then th th comes the answer, or the question, rather, is it now? Is it already happened and you don't know? Wow. If, if it is, a, there is a artificial reality. If you are in a simulated environment, and it's so good that you can't tell the difference, how do you know if you're in it right now? Wow. So that that might be the future. That's what a lot of these guys are saying. They're saying it's not going to be a physical future where you can, you know, where all of a sudden you're going to have robot feet. And they're, they're saying, man, maybe that'll be a little while. But after that, what gets really weird is the virtual world. Hmm. The virtual world is going to be indiscernible. You're going to have no reason to go out there and become a fireman because you could, you could just put on a helmet and be a fireman. You know, there's going to be no reason to be uh, an Olympic athlete. You could be an Olympic athlete. You could program all those parameters into your brain and program it all into your, your artificial world that you live in. Like the, the real world of living in a world where, you know, you actually have to go dig a ditch and plant a tree, that might be... But that might not exist in the future. But then what goes on outside you? That, that, like, who's programming the machines? Exactly! I'll do you one better. It gets even freakier than that. If you create an artificial environment, if you create a simulation, and inside of that simulation you have real people that don't know they're in a simulation and continue on their lives the same way we are right now, and inside that simulation they create their own simulation, then simulations become fractal, just like the whole rest of the universe. If you look at the whole universe, inside of every atom, the way it is, it's, it's, it's very much like the universe itself. There's a mm -hmm. massive amount of space in between the actual objects. So the universe itself is like the inside of an atom. The smaller you get, the more it mimics the biggest things that we know. That is odd. I've always thought, yeah, you look at an atom and it's kind of like, you know, you got your nucleus, things rotating, uh, spinning around it. It does resemble uh, the uh, solar the systems and galaxies, which all do the same thing. Yeah. Well, have you ever seen those? Oh, sorry, have you ever seen those photos of the universe in comparison to uh, a brain cell? No, does that look exactly the same a too? A human <laughs> brain cell looks exactly like our version of the universe. That's so fucked up. Wow. There yeah, is. like they, there's photos. You can download, look it up on the internet. There's photos of them side by side. They're like identical. Like the universe literally might be the, a brain cell inside of another being. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, maybe, it's, well, the, just the fact that the universe exists itself. People are like, oh, that's too much. Just the fucking universe itself is too much. A hundred billion galaxies, each one with a supermassive black hole in the middle of it. It's one half of one percent of the mass of the galaxy. And if you go inside that black hole, you go into another universe. They believe that inside every black hole is, in fact, a whole nother world, a completely different universe filled with hundreds of billions of galaxies, each one the same way with a supermassive black hole in it. And if you went into that, you'd go into a whole nother universe. Okay, that's, now that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking too much. Jesus. What in We're physics tiny. is it that uh, it's, it's very small, obviously, it's like, you know, quantum physics, where the... the Molecules that were being observed behave differently than the molecules that weren't being observed. Do you know what I'm talking about? That oh, yeah, I saw that. that Joe turned really us on to that video. Oh, was it Joe who did? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What yeah, was that? Well, it's the, what gets really, it's the observer, the, the concept that when you measure particles and waves, when, when you measure them, they're different than when you don't measure them. When you observe them, they behave mo more strangely and different than if you're not observing them. And I actually talked to this, this uh, scientist from JPL uh, two days ago about this, and he was trying to explain it to me, but I'm too fucking stupid to understand it exactly. But 
apparently there's a way to detect whether or not something is changing because of being measured or whether it's changing because there because someone is participating in watching it. And when someone's participating, the results are different. And a I'll, person is watching it. Do we give off something when we watch that we don't know? That's possible, yeah. But it's also possible that our own intent uh, actually affects the, the quantum world around us. Like the, the woo-woo Deepak Chopra shit, you know, the uh, you create your own environment, your environment is <laughs> a product of your consciousness. When they say that kind of shit and you're like, okay, I don't even know what the fuck this guy's saying, there might be something to that. There, you're, you may very well affect your environment by, by your presence. Fuck. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that one really, that one really was freaky. Yeah, it's just shit we don't know about. We'll never know. By the way, that's how dumbbells would always <clears throat> wind up a, yeah. a, a physics conversation. One goes, uh, that's freaky, and the other one goes, there's a lot of shit we don't know. We just don't know. We just don't know. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, Joe, mm. so this show's going to be great, man. Joe Rogan questions everything, premiering on uh, Sci-Fi Tonight at 10. Any other, uh, I quickly just run through some of the other topics we could look forward to seeing on the show. Uh, we uh, we did uh, a test with um, a bunch of people that are. Do you, do you know? You guys know what remote viewing is? No. Yeah, I used to hear about it on Art Bell. Yeah, exactly. Art Bell's awesome. I love that show. Yeah. But uh, remote remote viewing is actually something that the our own government, the CIA, had a remote viewing program for almost twenty years. And what these people did was they sat down and could tune in to an area in the world and draw with uh, a certain degree of accuracy the various aspects of it. They, they could actually, like, find out things that were going on in the world. And I met with this guy, Ed Dames, who's, like, oh, uh, yeah. one, one of the head guys in this uh, – ancient remote viewing or remote viewing program and he claims that they found Osama bin Laden long before the government uh, ever acted and he he believes that they didn't act because the government wanted to continue the war they actually didn't want to find Osama bin Laden it was a very interesting conversation does that day it's nice to hear him on our belt too does he offer any any kind of like uh, proof or, or, or data on that or is it because that almost sounds like a more political ideology that he's yes. kind of espousing there yeah, you're right, it does. No, no, when I asked him about, like, actual specific stuff, his is very, he's a slippery guy. Yeah. It's, there's one, there wasn't a lot there. And I wonder how much of it is, you know, how much you can actually talk about, what's actually classified. But they apparently did find some uh, Russian submarine that was uh, unknown at the time and enormous and had a very specific design uh, that's different from any submarine that uh, they had heard before, that, that had been built uh, on America. American, on the American side before, I don't know though. I don't. I don't really. It's. It seems. It's like all those things when people tell you about psychics. There's always a, an air of fuckery about it. <laughs> like you, you hear the story and you go, okay, what? He knew about your grandmother. Yeah, I went to the psychic. He told me all about my grandmother. He told, and you go, like, don't you know about your grandmother? Right. Does anybody ever tell you some shit you don't know? Because they always seem to tell you some shit that you already know. So then, <laughs> then I want to go... It's the only way it works, right? I wish I was in that conversation, because you might be an idiot. That guy might be, like, a good con artist. And he might be posing questions <clears> in <throat> very leading ways, and you might fall right in his, his traps. He might just be really good at getting you to give up information. How come, yeah, why does the dead person always say something with love or I'll miss you? How come the dead person never says anything? Stupid. Right. Like, what did my grandmother say? She said, My cunt itches. That's all she came out with. <laughs> well, Terrence McKenna had a, a funny line about that where people were like channeling, and it was like, like it was, Listen, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you don't, like, just become smart all of a sudden when you die. If you're dealing with a person who's, like, a reflection of who they were when they were alive, it's very likely you're talking to a dead idiot. Right. <laughs> and, 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 the message is, and the message is always vague. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, get the fuck almost out of here. Horse shit. <clears throat> of course it's horseshit. Of course it's horseshit. It's How almost, specific? It's, it's like I said about the unfuckable white dudes. It all it boils down to like the same sort of thinking, and that thinking, it by the way, it doesn't just exist in this. It exists in almost all of these weird mysteries, like people that believe in chemtrails and people that believe in a lot of other nutty shit. They want mysteries to be real. They want.
want yep. them to be real. And they, they, they have confirmation bias to the point where they ignore all the information that points to that this might not be true. Did you ever talk to uh, Richard C. Hoagland? No, no, I haven't talked to him, but I've watched his lectures. He, that guy's bananas. Yeah, he's the guy who's obsessed with the face on Mars, despite yeah. better pictures showing yeah, us a bunch of mountains. Nothing. He still goes, no, look, you can see the fedora. It's like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your fucking mind. Well, he also <laughs> does these weird measurements where he says, if you go from this rock to that rock, it's exactly this distance. The same distance from the tip of the pyramid to the foot of the paw of the sphinx. Oh. Like, he makes these weird... Yeah, you know, which like, makes okay, no sense. Why did you do that, though? Yeah, yeah, anyone can make anything the same distance. Right. You just yeah. measure things that doesn't, don't even go together. Yeah, yeah. you just choose to measure distances and arbitrarily throw them all together. It's, it, yeah, it's all the same thing. There's a, lot of pe- there's a lot of real mysteries in the world, but there's also a lot of muddy thinking. Yeah, that's the problem with that stuff is like because there are there are so many interesting things that people instead of just finding the data that disproves the mystery, they obsess and ignore the data that disproves it and harp on the teeny bit of data that might is a little bit uh, ambiguous and could support it. Exactly. That's why they call it confirmation bias, that you lean towards things that confirm your belief. Mm. And that's a huge part of what you find when you start looking into all these things, whether it's UFOs. That's the other thing, the UFO people. We, we investigated UFOs. There's almost no evidence, like almost <clears throat> none. There's, yeah. there's a few, like, photographs that could be fucking anything, and there's a few people that say, well, there's some radar I- I- information. May Okay, maybe, but there's not, like, one really hard piece of data, like not one piece of metal that you could bring somewhere and someone can go, that's not from this planet. Huh. There's, there's not one thing that we can't do here. And then there's also the, the, the reality that, the United States government and other governments have been experimenting with experimental aircraft that they haven't told people about from the beginning of fucking time. I mean, yeah. all this shit that we have today that looks crazy, like the stealth bomber, right. at one point in time yep. was just a, an experiment. So they had to fly the experiment. And people would, <laughs> if you ever seen a stealth bomber in real life flying around? Looks just like a UFO I mean, if, you, if you see it. It's awesome. They're amazing fucking. <laughs> We were at, uh, when I was filming Fear Factor, it was right after September 11th, so uh, they were flying a lot of those out of the um, the Air Force Base out near uh, Palmdale, uh, which is where we did a lot of the stunts, and every day you would see a fucking UFO fly over there. <laughs> nice. It was amazing, this big black disc, and that's what a stealth bomber is. They look like, like a, like, looks like right out of Star Wars. Or the Harrier jets, I think they're called, that, that hover. I mean, there's all kinds of things yeah. that what we finally see. The only, the only issues I have with UFOs is a couple of things. One, is, isn't the guy who started Project Blue Book, who set out to disprove, uh, or he, he was headed Project Blue Book, set out to disprove UFOs and wound up becoming uh, convinced that they existed. I, I don't know how true yeah, that his is. His name is Jay Allen Hynek. Yeah, he, he started Project Blue Book and was actually hired to debunk things. They gave him very specific parameters, he says. Like, if you if you find something, call it swamp gas. If you find something yeah. else, call it ball lightning. Never, whatever you do, say that it's, it could be from another world. And so he investigated a bunch of things and then went on to do this Project Blue Book thing and went on to uh, went on to, to write books. But the problem with these guys is it becomes their career. Yep. They make a living off of it. They, they go to these conferences and they, they make money and they write books and they make money. So it, it gets into that weird area like, all right, maybe, maybe. But I feel like as we're moving forward with, with space travel, one of the things that you realize is we're, we're concentrating less and less on sending actual living beings into space yeah. and much more on probes. So. When you see, like, uh, a lot of these things that are flying around in the sky that, like, people attribute to, uh, to UFOs, what, isn't it much more likely that that's some drone that the government's working on, something that can do things that you couldn't do if you had a person inside of it? Mm, of My, you know, some, you know, I'll tell you what's hard to discount, too, is when pilots will occasionally, you'll hear their transmissions, uh, uh, and they're talking about something flying, and, there, and, and the flight patterns that this thing or, the, or, the, or what it's doing in flight really yep. throws them for a loop. That, that's, that's kind of yep. hard for me to – because they understand how engines work. They understand how uh, you know, aerodynamics works and aircraft. They understand all that. But, again, it makes a lot more sense that it would be something Unmanned, earthly. Yeah. Uh, unman- if, you, if you told a guy uh, that was 
um, flying a prop plane from World War One about a jet engine. Yeah. Uh, and, and you showed him a jet, he'd lose his fucking mind and think it was something from outer space. Yeah, if you showed him one of those Maybe, uh, yeah. Chuck Yeager supersonic jets that right. that cloud as it passes through the south <laughs> yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, that's not from this planet. Yeah, that can't be from this planet. It have doesn't even have a propeller. Photos? Yeah. Those photos when they pass through the sound barrier. And oh, it's amazing. it's around the jet. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, big fucking like a funnel coming off of the front of the plane. I've never and, seen that. And the back. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, when you pass the sound barrier, you you make this boom. And like there's this, like there's a, a visual uh, thing that happens that you could see in these photos of these jets going so fast that like it warps the sound around them. It's really, it warps oh, the air crazy. around them. Didn't the Concorde do that? Yeah, yeah, the Concorde was supersonic. I would love to have flown on that once before, you know, before they started yeah. cracks in the wind. I wish it was the one leaving France. I figured that. <laughs> I was assuming that's the one you'd hope I purchased a ticket on. But I prefer the fucking British Airways. <laughs> yes, well, you guys course. know about what they're trying to do with the, this new supersonic um, tunnel uh, between uh, Japan and New York, or between uh, China and New York. They're going to do uh, a bunch of these different, like they run on some, some sort of form of magnetism that's going to be able to go thousands of miles an hour. It's to be a train where you can go from New York to China in like two hours. Wow. How are they going to build that? Uh, they're going to dig a hole, I guess, the same but, way you dig the sure. Holland Tunnel. How the fuck do they do that? <laughs> yeah, well, well, how, that will take forever. How the fuck did they make the Holland Tunnel? Good point. But is that is that easier this than is just about making aircraft? Twenty million Holland yeah. tunnels. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaky, but all the shit we already have is freaky. I mean, right. how the how the fuck did they make any train? When you know, back when trains were first made, they thought if you went over thirty five miles an hour, people would just explode. Yeah, they thought you'd die. It was fatal <laughs> to go that fast. <laughs> you're never gonna make it. Oh, a you're man fine. will surely perish. <laughs> yeah. What if you could like ride a horse, and that's where it ends? But the uh, aircraft we have, like uh, like uh, Branson has, that that can leave the atmosphere now. Why, well, I'm not sure. Why wouldn't they just develop that to go to China faster? Where you leave the atmosphere, pick mm. up speed. They they said they could be to New York and L.A. in an hour doing that if if it's developed right. Well, that is possible, but there's also a lot of shit that's up there that you would maybe fly into, like other planes. It's hard to get out of the way of a bird when you're going seventeen thousand times. <laughs> yeah. <of the> sound. <laughs> You hit a flock of seagulls, and you know the fucking whole plane comes down. Like they have to shoot birds down, and in, in some airports, when you have like a high bird population, they actually hire snipers to take the birds out. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, and PETA people get all pissed off. They get angry because you know why are you killing these birds? Stop flying! What are you doing? But that's the, <laughs> the reality of, of of air travel. Is that, like that that. Wasn't that the thing, the miracle on, on the Sully, hunt? yeah. He killed he a bunch of geese. Birds. Yeah. <laughs> a geese murderer. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> the plane flies into a pack of birds or a flock of birds, and they go into the engine, and the engines explode. <laughs> yeah, he's seen as Hitler by geese. <laughs> <laughs> Both engines into a, through a flock. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, you're right, though. Maybe yeah. taking off at that speed, you would run into something. That's a, oh, it's, not only that, how about the satellites? you ever seen one of those maps of satellites that are Oh, it's crazy. There's atmosphere? so much shit up there. So much shit. It's yeah. overflowing with shit. I want to see Gravity, that movie with Sandra Bullock and Clooney, where they're on the space uh, station and something like some debris hits them, and they're fucking... That looks unbelievable. Have you seen trailers for that? No, I haven't seen that. Look up the trailers for Gravity. It looks really fucking great. Well, you know what they're trying to do now, like with the space station, they're they're, this, uh, they're developing these things that are like they're inflatable houses in space. They're like they're these things. They're they're instead of like a, a solid space station that you have to piece together out of there. Here's a wall and there's the roof and all of it comes together. They actually they're inflatable, and they have two of them that are already in orbit. Really? Yeah, yeah. They're this. Uh, there's um, Bigelow Ranch. There's a guy, Bigelow, uh, the same guy who, by the way, is the one who investigates uh, claims uh, for the for the government now when it comes to um, uh, UFO sightings. This guy's a UFO enthusiast and some super billionaire who also uh, runs uh, this uh, aerospace company that develops these inflatable, some like, incredibly thick. Uh, a powerful uh, material that they use for the walls that's better to, at withstanding micrometeor micrometeor impacts than uh, the space station is. Huh. Wow! 
Yeah, because that's all you need is a fucking, you know, one asshole brings up a safety pin. And then, and just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I had a pencil in my pocket. Oh, I popped the house. <laughs> well, Joe, you never disappoint, yeah. man. Holy fuck. I'm looking forward to this show, man. Absolutely. You get good reviews, which I was happy for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I didn't know I got any reviews, but yeah. that's awesome. I'm yeah. psyched. Yeah, Joe Rogan questions everything premiering on Sci-Fi Tonight at 10. And, of course, the podcast going strong, uh, one of my favorites. And and uh, it's on three times per weekend here on our channel, which is very, very Yeah, cool. hey, thanks for that. It's, a, it's an honor. I really appreciate being on with you guys. You guys are the shit. And I have, one, of course, one question, an opinion. What do you think about December 28th, the, the Silver Wyman rematch? Oh, that's going to be fucking it. very interesting. I think, you know, nobody expected the result except maybe the Weidman camp, but nobody expected uh -huh. it to go down that way where, you know, Silva was fucking around oh, man. and doing the taunting and gets clipped and knocked unconscious. But when a guy knocks you out once, that, that guy can probably do it again. Will he do it again? I don't know, but he's going to be confident as fuck. And that's not even his strong suit. Weidman's strong suit is the ground. He's a really good wrestler, four-time All-American, and his submission game is, like, world-class. He's a bad motherfucker. Right. He could submit anyone in the world if he gets him into a good position. But, you know, Anderson Silva is Anderson Silva, and there's a reason why everybody called him the greatest fighter ever. It's because up until that fight, he eliminated guys with spectacular results, like front-kicking people in the face and knocking them unconscious. People that nobody beat before, he ragdolled and treated them like they were dog shit. I mean, he's, he's the greatest ever. But, you know, there's, in every sport, there comes a time when it's over. And there comes a time when someone's got your number. Whether or not that was just him fucking around, he got caught, and he'll come back and destroy Weidman in the rematch and let everybody know he's still the king. And, you know, the king just got a little bored. He got silly, and he got clipped, and now he knows. Hmm. There's that, too. It's, but it's going to be fucking crazy exciting, I'll tell you that. It's a no-lose for the UFC because if Weidman wins, all of a sudden he's almost this legendary fighter now who everyone wants to go see fight again. And if Silva wins, it's like, oh, okay, Silva's back. Well, then, yeah. no, then you got to go for the third fight. Go for a rubber band. Oh, yeah, yeah got Depending it. upon the, the way it goes down, of course. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, I'll tell you that. Did, who the fuck knows what's going to happen, but it's going to be crazy exciting. I can't believe I'm asking you this, but I'm going to. There was a, does he, did, does Wyman have his balls or something? Did he lose his balls or his dick? What? <laughs> okay, all right. Why? What are you talking I, about? I saw it on, uh, of course, Twitter or something. Oh, there was oh, some weird rumor. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I figured I'd go right to the, Jesus, the main guy. Well, I haven't seen his balls or his dick, but, but I'm assuming they're there until told otherwise. <laughs> but how right. lazy am I that I didn't Google it after I read this tweet to <laughs> fucking <laughs> figure it out myself? Going, yes, I win, Opie. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> that probably would have come out before. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, you guys. I got to get the fuck out of here. I love you. All right, man. Absolutely. See you soon, right? Later, Joe. Yeah, 10 o'clock tonight. Next time I'm in New York, so I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be in, in studio. Great. We'd love to have All right, buddy. You, obviously. Take care, guys. Thanks, Bye, Joe. Joe. Joe Rogan. Yeah, he's great, man. Big hearted death squad all over the fucking place. He's a great, great uh, oh, my God, he's fat, talker. Man. Really, really interesting uh, dude. He was made for radio. Are you kidding me? Yeah. His podcast is great. I mean, well, it's, it's radio. It's legitimately good. <laughs> it's radio. It's just new radio. Yep. It's made for us. What yeah. do you guys think about me wearing the sunglasses? Good guy. <laughs> it's terrific. That's uh, good luck. Perfect. Good luck for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost my good ones, so now I got these pieces of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I sit next to you on the airplane. Yeah. Lucky you. Can I? Can I get the window? Yeah, he likes the aisle. I like the aisle. Perfect. Oh, yeah. oh, that's good. He's one of those rare guys that actually likes the aisle yeah, seat. Yeah, I tinkle a lot. And then what, are you like alone? Because uh -huh. I think there's, there's two one, and one. one seat and uh -huh. then the aisle and then two um, seats. I'm probably a uh, alone guy. Yeah. I'm probably in the, the one. You guys, uh, just, I'll be happy to sit alone if you guys want to sit together. <laughs> that's that's okay. okay. If you guys want to be a team, I'm fucking more than happy to <laughs> no, take the okay. fucking I'm one. Just, I'm just going to crash out. It's only an hour and oh, stuff. Oh, you're not. Yeah, I'll, good luck with that. I'll go to sleep. You watch me. Yeah. You a no, nut. Ant, Ant sleeps through everything. Oh, yeah. no. Edgar, though, Shed that could be a rough one. Wake up. Shed dev. I want to tell I'm the pilot. <laughs> I've been flying. Flying. <laughs> I'd be honored to sit next to you. Uh, I wouldn't mind at all, Aww. obviously. I'm going to keep this going Aww, where we're good. getting along. <laughs> Actually, me and Ant, like, uh, we had, we shared a moment yesterday. We both what? had cars leaving the city, and oh, fuck, God, Ant that was rules. Funny. That was Ant funny. was like, Anthony and his 
Well, I didn't. I almost said your car. You probably don't want to say it. The, no, the Escalade. Okay, right? the Escalade. Yeah, it's it's like a fucking. <laughs> it's like a plow. Oh man, man! If you're lucky enough to be uh, behind Anthony in city traffic, <laughs> oh, oh it's the best. It's like one big huge plow. Like everything gets out of your way. I was, I was fucking zigging and a zagging. <laughs> and I'm like, I was feeling good because I'm like right on your back bumper. Huh? Yeah, you all are. the way to the tunnel. I was happy. And then we get to the tunnel, and I'm like, I'm going to continue this. We got through the toll booth, and I think he's downplaying it. He instantly went up to 100 miles an hour. <laughs> yes. and, and I couldn't see him. Less than 30 seconds. Mm. Like, he went through the toll, then I went yeah. through the toll. Less than 30 seconds. I couldn't see his car anymore. That's where you and make I wasn't, up all that time you fucking lost uh, through the streets of Manhattan. I was still going 70 to 80 miles an hour. So yeah, you had to be going close to 100 miles an hour. I think I was. That thing disappeared, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, found some, I, I found some really good openings, too. Like, I, I, I saw, like, oh, man, I could go to the right lane. <laughs> right. I passed everybody. And then was right amazing. back in the left, no one in front of me. So I was able to go pretty fast for a long time. All right. Uh, yeah, we got a fun. very, very special guest on our hotline. Oh, my. Oh. A very special guest. Cool. Bonjour. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's our mystery guest. Ooh. A mystery. What a <laughs> yeah, mystery. This is, what a mystery. This is our mystery yeah. guest. <laughs> are you in the industry, sir? Yes, I am. You are. <laughs> it's, it's, not it's not Colin Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> 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 I'm flying up today. I just want to wish you guys a safe flight. I hope your plane doesn't horribly crash and burn on the runway. Yeah, that would suck. Like that. I would be screwed up if you guys ended up in a bloody, you know, Jesus. Hulk seeming steel, and you know, died. it would be horrible. What so, time is your flight? I hope it's safe. My flight's a safe flight, eleven o'clock. Wow. The afternoon flight's supposed to have a little mechanical problem. So oh no! Know. Why? Why are we all flying together? It yeah. should be a plane full of oh, nut yeah. jobs, yeah, big stars. Plane full of laugh full of laugh inducers. Yeah. <laughs> laugh inducers. There's probably some kind of law because the pilot would just be laughing too hard to fly yeah. the plane. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Cracking up at our sketches. Oh, yeah. Oh. Our, our skits. You doing our show uh, tomorrow, Colin? Uh, no, on Friday. Tomorrow. On oh, Friday? I have something to do, yeah. Okay, great. What do you got to do oh, tomorrow? man. I got to do the keynote speech, the big speech. What oh. time is that? One. Oh, I want to go to that. Oh, you got to. It's going to be a it's going to be a real blue ribbon uh, event. Okay, so your keynote speech is at one o'clock on Thursday, so I will be going to that. Yes, let's you all go. Believe it. Oh, 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 oh. keynote speech. Hey, would you like to try uh -huh. some uh, beaver tail bacon? Ugh. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> some guy was trying to turn us on to beaver tail bacon. He says it tastes yeah. just like bacon. Who was it, Carlos Danger? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Dude, what, did you hear about that? What the fuck, right? Go ahead, go. I mean, it's unbelievable. Go ahead, go. What a, what a disgrace. <laughs> what a oh, disgrace is yeah. right. You can't have a mayor doing that. I mean, it's really, honestly. You know what I was saying all day? His name should be Carlos Pekka. Yeah, that's a good one, Chuck. Wow. I'll get it. Yeah. Because no instead of danger, he was sending pictures of his pecker and stuff. Mm. Oh, There's, uh, it shows lack of judgment is what it is. A mayor... Uh, that joke? Yes, it does. Yes. That joke <laughs> is a complete lack of and humor. Uh, you can't have a mayor that's doing that. I mean, I, who gives a shit what he's doing if he's, you know, working the job site? He's doing the sheetrock in uh, some place in the conch. But right. uh, for the love of God, <laughs> you can't be the mayor of uh, New York City. With the judgment yeah. that poor. No, it's kind of crazy. And his dumb wife just standing there next to him, smiling. Well, what's she gonna say? You know what I'm saying? She's gonna say, "Take a fucking hike." No way. No. She's. No, I mean, she's got her own little hopes and dreams. Yeah, well, that's true. She does have. Uh, some yeah, you didn't realize aspirations. I had the of whatever her name is, Hoda, Hoda, whatever her name is. I didn't think you'd have the sympathy either. But... The other angle oh. on the wife. Well, you do. You we went the other way. This is what I like to do. I like to bring the show to a screeching halt. No, it's <laughs> where is your congratulations. Where, where, where's your uh, where's your show? Where's your <laughs> where is your um, your thing? I don't like the fact that my show. I was thinking, yeah, my show. I'm kind of thought the seeds. Things are pretty good. Then Chappelle just says, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll come up. And they're like, okay, well, we sold forty thousand seats tonight, just in case you decide to come up. Wow. <laughs> 
Guys, that was meant to be amusing. I'm sorry you took it so seriously. So sorry. Um, well, no, I, 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 I he, like, wow. he sold a lot of. I'm just everybody I know has got something right. going on about me. I'm fucking. Mark uh, Marin got season two on IFC, and Rogan's got a show, and Louis got season three, and fucking everybody's getting seasons. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the hell? What the hell have I got? Yeah. Fuckhead. Well, no. you got you got a, at least a one man show you're doing of new material. Shut right? up! You're on the radio every day. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you true. got a good gig, Jimmy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a good gig. It's a great gig. But... You get a little gratitude. I mean, yeah. TV. It's time for my face <laughs> to be seen. Yeah. That... It's time for my face to be seen. I'll be honest with you. I was talking to Keith Robinson about your face only two days ago, and I realized, you know, I spent a lot of time, my girlfriend lived in Coney Island when I was in high school. I spent a lot of time in Coney Island, and I do think, and I'm not kidding, you're descended from the pinhead tribe somehow. <laughs> because you lose your weight loss. You know, most people lose weight and their head gets big and they look weird. Yeah, like right head's shrinking as you lose weight. Well, I'm a man. small guy. I'm a little fella. You're a pinhead. <laughs> you're a pinhead. I'm a little a pin, man. Like Zippy the pinhead, yes. <laughs> He's a circus act. <laughs> did Keith defend me or did he agree with your analysis? <laughs> oh, boy. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yes, Keith. He has known to flip sides on occasion during the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, knock it off, Colin. He's good. Yeah, come on, Don't man. Let's be supportive. Little head. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. That's exactly right. Yeah, of course. As he boxes every day and gets fatter. Keith really is a miracle. <laughs> It's like, what, do you dip your boxy gloves in chocolate and fucking punch each other? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, shit. All right, guys. I'll see you up there. Yeah, man. I'm I'm going to see your show when I'm up there. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you. All right. I'll I'll Akbar. Yeah, let's go pee. All right. Let's go. The Opie and Anthony Show on Sirius XM.